Battalion, the Rhodesian Light Infantry, known throughout the service as One RLI. The men of the RLI are Rhodesia's commanders and form a well-trained, efficient fighting force prepared for any emergency. The men are selected for their fitness, their initiative, and above all, their love of a rugged, open-air life. The RLI offers a young man a full life and an army career second to none in the world. Here are three young men eager to join Rhodesia's small but highly mobile and hard-hitting army. Let's follow these three recruits. De La Rue in the blue jeans has just left school. Nell, on the other hand, has had a spell in Civil Street, but felt the lack of excitement and camaraderie. Scarry is coming back for his second spell in the army. He already knows Caesar and Cleopatra, the regimental mascots, and so he introduces them to his two new acquaintances. First stop for any recruit in any army is the quartermaster's store. None of the old fit what it touches here. This is a highly efficient unit, and today's soldier needs properly fitting equipment. A special allowance is paid for upkeep and replacement. With bulging kit bags, they proceed to a dark room which they will share with five other recruits. Not exactly the Ritz, but clean and sunny and equipped with the basic necessities. The next day, somewhat ill at ease in their new outfits, they begin their basic training, even square bashing. This is essential for smartness, teamwork, and quick response. Next to the tools of their profession, the weapons which in future will be part of them. This 7.62 self-loading rifle is every soldier's standard equipment. The speed with which they handle the MAG machine gun is vital to its efficient operation in action. And for close quarter fighting, they learn to operate the Sterling. As part of their duties, commandos must be able to attack armored vehicles. And Scar and De La Rue practice loading the 3.5 inch rocket launcher. Another useful anti tank weapon is the Imaga grenade which is fired from a soldier's rifle. The 36 grenade helps commandos if they have to neutralize pockets of resistance in close quarter fighting. De La Rue shows his companions how to operate the two-inch mortar. This modern dining hall provides a varied and well-balanced diet for the men of the RLI. The kitchens are maintained to a high standard of cleanliness laid down by army medical officers. Light refreshments are also available in this large dining hall. For relaxation at the end of the day, there is the canteen, where our soldiers and recruits can gather for a chat, a drink, or a game of snooker. Another well patronized spot is the swimming pool, used extensively during the hot summer months and somewhat more sparingly during the winter months. A modern cinema gives shows twice weekly, and the programs are varied and well up to date.
The ally maintains a very high standard of fitness, but should a soldier fall ill, he can be sure of receiving the best attention in this modern, compact hospital. Their high standard of fitness is due largely to their toughness. Physical training plays a big part in these soldiers' lives and is carried further in a variety of sporting activities. Selected teams from the RLI compete regularly with their counterparts from the police, air force, and other organizations. Apart from increasing their fitness, this also helps to build up a high degree of team spirit amongst the men. this team spirit and fitness will become a matter of life or death. In his normal military training, every commando has to go through assault courses. This develops further the teamwork and stamina which will enable him to arrive at his destination despite all obstacles and still be able to fight. finished their basic training, the recruits are posted to their commando. Young de Laurent has joined the reconnaissance troop. His training now becomes more specialized, and he concentrates on armored scout cars, running machine guns, and radio sets. Another specialized section is the signals troop. In combat conditions, they are the vital link in every operation. Skay has joined this troop, and during the next few weeks, his main concern will be communications. Now has joined one of the commando subunits, and among the many things he will learn is the art of unarmed combat. Surprise is the key to the success of most military actions. Commandos are usually the spearheads of any large-scale operations, and they're taught the quickest and safest ways of reaching their objectives. This one involves steep climbing. Two of the main methods of descent are called the flying angel and the abseil. Chinese are now well advanced and are taking part in battle exercises. Here, for instance, a commando patrol has been pinned down by enemy fire from a disused building. Under covering fire, two members of the section run forward to lay explosive charges against the side of the building. Commando's training usually culminates in a major exercise. They have to bring into action everything they've learned, and all this under well-simulated battle conditions. This is the final test of their fitness and knowledge. Here, every piece of equipment and every soldier becomes part of the surroundings. The art of camouflage and concealment is of paramount importance. In a world of moon flats and nuclear fission, the lone soldier once more emerges a key figure, 
adapting himself to any conditions, a self-sufficient fighting unit. army today, promotion can be awarded at any time. Trooper Mel has shown powers of leadership during the exercise and has started on the first step of his new career. At one stage of the exercise, a radio message sets the wheels in motion for a commando operation against an enemy force known to be operating in the surrounding area. Being on constant alert, the commandos are ready to move out within minutes. With an armored scout car in the lead, two jeep loads of troops set out after the enemy. the men of the RLI know how the tables can be turned. Like step off the leading commander is the bus, take up position and return the enemy's fire. The armored car then moves into a position to cut off escape routes. While all this is going on, the main body of troops move into an assault position. A smoke screen is laid to cover their movements and give them the opportunity to launch a rapid counterattack. <laughs> Much of Africa is rugged and inaccessible to motor transport. These tough Rhodesians operate in very isolated country and when necessary are supplied by air drops. The dropping zone is first secured and defended by commando troops. Okay. Let's stop. Uh, 7-2, 7-2, uh, Yankee Charlie signal her. Markers are laid out and the Air Force is called in by radio to drop supplies. Hello, uh, handsome, uh, handsome, this is Tweezers B, come in over. is over. The recruits have crossed the line and are now fighting men of whom any army would be proud. The regiment back at base dons ceremonial uniform for the presentation of colors. For members of the armed services, the colors have a profound significance, and this service of consecration indicates the high degree of reverence in which they are held. 
The colours presented here on behalf of Her Majesty the Queen by His Excellency the Governor and blessed by the Church have great significance to the days in light infantry. They are the first colours presented to this regiment and will be a focal point of their honour, self-respect and esprit de corps. It has been written that the flag is a symbol intrinsically valueless, extrinsically priceless. The colours embody the spirit of the regiment, binding these modern soldiers with the Rhodesians of the past. These are modern pioneers drawing on the courage of that little band of Rhodesians who came to the country so many years ago. Commandos are part of a compact and efficient army of men who love their country and will defend it against any threat. 